So the next stage is to um, upgrade it to the very latest version. But the first thing I want to do is I want to lock in the kernel version that's currently been installed. So what I'm going to do is to show, I don't know if I can show you here the current version. No, uh, Emate minus A. So that's the original version that was installed with 10.1. Um, if I show you the boot directory, this has just been installed. You can see it's October 5th, 1717, just a minute ago. This is the newer version that was installed with version 10.12 of Debian. So you can see it's got a dash 20 there. That's the version that I want to lock in. I don't want that updated if, if it does get updated with 10.13. So what I need to do is there's a command called apt mark where you can specify that you want certain packages to be held at a particular version. And you can run show hold and it shows me that there's nothing currently held at a particular version. And to ensure that the kernel is held at this current version or the new version 4.19.0.20 I do at mark again hold and then Linux image AMD64 just a package name for the kernel and it says it's set on hold now and again I can do show hold to show that that package is now held so any time that I do an update and there's a kernel update it won't actually update the kernel it will keep it at the at the version that's currently active, which will will be twenty when I reboot. So now I want to repeat all of this with the updates, but for version ten point thirteen, which is the latest and current most current version of uh, Debian ten, it keeps me up to date as possible. And so, really, what I need to do now is to recall the update commands so I'll do the update this first of all this time I'm going to read them from my mounted drive because I haven't copied them over to the disk because there wasn't enough room so mnt debian forward slash 10.13.0 and the rest of this should be just a case of modifying this Not 13. Install it into a directory called 10.13. Uh, but this time I don't want to delete these because they're on my external disk. And that should do all those so this this will take this is off hard this so it's going to take a little bit longer maybe five ten minutes or so so now i'm going to do the um non-free one just recall the right command is it that one Yep. So similar thing is ten dot. Oh, did I miss the twelve one? Oh yeah, there it is. Ten dot twelve. I changed to thirteen. Uh, the location's different. Thirteen point zero plus one free jig do ten dot thirteen and I'll remove the 
RM command. I don't want to delete this. That should be it. So if we look at the directory, we've got the three update directories and the non free one for 10.13. So once again, it's just a case of updating this nano file. And again, once again, it's just the update files that we touch. We don't ever touch the base files. So just change these to 13. Save that. Go back if we do an update. You can see there's the 1013 uh, images that have been read, and you can see there's now 91 updates in between 10.13, uh, yeah, 10.13, 10.12. So before I go any further, I'm going to remove the old 10.12. They're not needed anymore. And you can see we've just got the original base version that I used, 10.1.0, and the latest version of Debian, 10. Well, at least Debian 10, which is 10.13, plus the non-free disk. So at update, as you saw, it says there's 91 packages. Let's quickly view them. And I'm not sure if there is a an update to the kernel Linux. Yes, there is. So it's going to be updated to some, I can't actually see the actual version that will be displayed there, but it should not update that one and should tell us that one hasn't been updated. So if I do apt upgrade now, And it actually says the following packages have been held back. And you can see Linux image 64, which is the package name that I held with apt mark. And that has done. So in theory, uh, if we do a reboot now, it should boot and still retain that old kernel and will not have updated the new kernel. Um, in fact, you can see there it's still at 4.19.0-20 um, rather than being updated to anything else. Let's just do the auto-remove as was suggested. Let's remove those two that are obviously not needed anymore. And if I do apt update again, it tells me that one can be upgraded. And again, that will be that one kernel version. And you can see the upgrade reports. So the current version we're running at the moment is 4.19.105 Deb 10 U15 and it wants to update it to 4.19.105 Deb 10 U16 and we've prevented that from happening. And it says there are two additional versions. Please use the A switch to see them. Let's try that. So it's telling us there's the new one it wants to update. There's the one that's currently installed and it's upgradable to the new one. And that's the original one that we saw that's in the boot directory. So that's it. I think what I'll do is I'll log out of this window, log out of this one, shut down and reboot and just make sure that after all that updating that nothing has gone awry. So there's the grub screen.
it started booting. And there's the login screen. So I'll log in. And there we are, we're in. So I'll get a console up again. You can see we've still got the same two kernels that are ready to load in the menu. And as you can see, we've booted with 419-024, which is the one that we held back. It hasn't been updated any further. And again, if I do apt update uh, as root, you can see that it's behaving as it was before. And I'll try and install something. Uh, let's try West North. I'm not sure if that will work. Game. Yes, it does like that. So it's going to install a game for us. You can see that's coming off several disks, disk 5, disk 4, disk 1, disk 2. So several disks there that are being scanned and read. And as I say, that shows why I think it's necessary to keep a copy of all the disks because you don't know where the package is or even what dependencies the package requires, where they're going to exist. So it could get quite complex if you're installing a big package and you don't know where the, those files reside. So that's installed. Let's now see if we can boot it. Start it off. There it is there. And yep, it's working. So that's that. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you found it interesting and appreciate a thumbs up on my videos if you do find them helpful or interesting. And subscribe to my channel, please, if you uh, want to hear about other videos that I do. Thank you. Goodbye.